I just want to go over a little bit of a trick that I learned years ago about games and playing and running and running a game. What I want to talk about was the rhythm of the game. So when you're playing a when you're playing a, you're telling a story basically or you're entertaining a group of people, you want you want there to be a rhythm to your storytelling. And you want to have highs and lows, but you want, and the reason that, that if you recognize this, this is from my, uh, this is from my flow state video that I did. You might want to go back and listen to that if you haven't listened to it yet to sort of understand what I'm talking about here. But the reason I've got the flow state going on an angle here is because you want your story to go on an angle. You want your story to climb. You want it to get more and more dramatic, more and more exciting. But you also need a rhythm to your story. And you need your story to, uh, to have highs and lows. And so your story is going to have a rhythm. And it's going to have peaks and valleys. Whoops. Like this. And you're going to have... So basically what you're going to have in here is you're going to have events that drive your story. And as your players in your game encounter each event, they'll conquer the event and it'll, there'll be a little bit of a lull in the action. They'll go to the next event, and then the next event, and then the next event. And what you want is you want these events to be getting more and more dramatic, more and more exciting. So you don't want, to, you don't want your story to be flat like this. You want your story to go on an angle, like a staircase. So that's why I've got this here, the flow state on an angle, because what you want is you want the flow of your story to get more and more exciting until finally you have the, the finale and a conclusion, at which point your story is over with. So this can be a story over a very long period of time, or it can be over a short period of time. Really, that's up, up to you. There can be multiple stories in between. But whatever story you're telling, you want it to follow basically this... Uh, this pattern. So what you what you want to do is you want to have your starting event and you want it to just go and get more and more exciting like this. So let's say you have in your story you have basically four events until you have your big conclusions. This would be kind of a very short story. Now what you want to do is you want to make sure that there's never an event that causes too much anxiety as I covered in the flow state one because that'll cause your players to check out they'll become worried that they can't actually accomplish the goals and uh, and they may even cause them to abandon the game altogether I've had that happen and you also don't want it to become too boring so you don't want your lulls to dip down into boring so one way that I that I think of this is is imagine that I have an event here and then the players go into a tavern and then I start focusing on the details of what's for what's on the menu and then we then then start focusing on the different players in the tavern strike up have one player focus on a conversation with one of the players and I start just focusing on that and I start ignoring all the other players. So you can see what's happening is I'm starting to get right into the boredom factor. Don't want to do that. I want to avoid all of that. So the way that I'll set up an adventure like this, an adventure story, is I'll have my events and I'll label them. Now I haven't thought about this yet, but but We'll just make up some kind of a story, and I'll explain how this works. So, let's say let's say that we're going to have a story, and the story is going to be the first thing. They're going to hear a rumor about a lost ruin. Players hear about a lost ruin in a tavern or whatever, and that builds up some excitement. Okay, we've got an adventure. They find out where it is, and it's supposed to be full of loot. That'll get their attention. Then they find the ruin, and they begin to start exploring it, and they end up finding a note in the ruin. 
saying that there's some kind of uh, uh, incredible magic item or, or perhaps somebody's been hidden and they're saying, help, help me and free me from, from this curse and I will reward you with some kind of a uh, uh, gift or something like that. Perhaps it's a vampire, ghost, something like that that wants to be rescued. The players, they have to decide whether they're going to do that or not. Whatever, but it, it creates some... It creates something. So there's there's a note and there's some kind of uh, reward associated with the note. And then my third event, they're getting there and they find the reward is hidden behind, say, a door and they have to uh, uh, find some kind of an item. Let's add a fifth. Let's add a fifth event here. That's our that's our crescendo. So. They, have, they need something in order to get through the door. So this is the other event they find. They find out that they have uh, a need for something. Okay, so a key. Perhaps they have to solve a riddle, something like that. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. And then the fourth one is they have to battle their way to get the key. So this would be the third one is getting the key. So they discover they need the key around here. They're discovering that they need the key. It would build up. They find the key. It's guarded by monsters, guarded by a riddle, something like that. But they get the key. Now they have to find the door. So the it's finding the door and conquering, you know, any obstacles leading to the door. So there might be traps, monsters, whatever. Uh, that they have to battle for the door. They manage to get through the door. And this one, they find the object of their quest, right? So they're trying to free somebody. But in trying to free somebody, they uh, encounter more obstacles. Perhaps another trap. Perhaps more monsters. A big bad. And they have to conquer that in order to free the object of their quest. And so they free their quest, and that's the end of your story. So you've got these events in your story. So this is how this is how I lay out an adventure before I start running a game. And now one of the one of the things that that I love about setting things up like this. So I'll just lay out the events. I'll lay out the specific details and the notes and the notes about the monsters and stuff. And what this allows me to do is allows me to make sure, or at least help me make sure, that I try not to cause too much anxiety, try not to cause too much boredom by having the events lined up so I know what's going to happen. The other thing is that this is an adventure in and of itself. This could be taking place, it could take place outside, it could pl take place on the ocean, it could take place on the moon, it could take place in another plane, it could take place on the deck of a ship, it could take place in a dungeon. Because I've got the story all laid out, I've got the bad guys all laid out, I just have to make sure that there's continuity throughout it, and that it makes sense. So what happens when this, when I have this set up, is I can take, like, I'll use as an example, a dungeon that I made. Now I have the events laid out for my story, and so what I can do is the players discover, they move into a room, I can use random events here. Or I could have this room being the very first event of my story. The option's mine. Now I can fill out the details of, this, of the room. I can add traps to it. I can do whatever I want. It doesn't mean I can't have the first event there. It doesn't mean I don't have to have the event there. So what this allows me to do is it allows me to very carefully control the flow state. Instead of having, instead of laying out my story on a dungeon, I lay out the story like this so that I can apply it to any dungeon. And in fact, I can have two or three stories going. I can have a, I can have a large overarching story in the world. I can have a story that's going on in town and then I can have the dungeon story happening. And here we would have the dungeon story. So they come in, do I have my first event here? Well, no, there's a really cool encounter here. Uh, maybe a random event, maybe I came up with something here, maybe maybe I came up with a series of other random events. So I'd have that occur here. They come into this room. Is this one going to be the event? 
Maybe, maybe not. What if the players decide to go this way? See, if I had hardwired the first event into here and, oh, the players have to find this room in order to uncover this event, what if the players went this way? If the players decide to go over here and all the way down over to here, and I put the first event here, well, they're going to be way over here, and it's going to it's going to make a very boring game as we come all the way back over here so that they can finally find this event. As opposed to just having it set out like this, fluidly, I can decide, well, okay, they've got this way, I'm going to have the first event here. So it's a way of allowing the flow of the story to run much better than if I had all of it laid out already in the map itself. So the only caveat that I have here about doing this is that you have to be careful with your random encounters. Your random encounters should all serve the story. If you're, if you're, and your encounters in the dungeon should make sense for the dungeon and should make sense for the story. So it does take a little bit of planning out your different events that are going to happen wherever. Now you may have events that you want specifically for a room because you've got that room drawn out in a certain way. But again, it shouldn't really matter. I mean, they can find a note for event one. They can find a note anywhere, right? Or or for event two, rather. The key, the key could be absolutely anywhere. It doesn't really matter. As long as you have the details of the key, how it's found, etc., like that, then you could put it anywhere you want. So when, there, so when you see in your flow state of your game that really you, you want to have something, some more... Uh, you know, an event happen, you can put it wherever your heroes happen to find themselves or your players happen to find themselves. And you can still fill the dungeon up full of monsters. And in fact, you can just fill it up full of monsters and you can decide, well, I'm going to replace this with one of my events. If you find that easier, you can meld the two together. You can do whatever you want. Just the only thing you want to be sure of is that there's a continuity between your random encounters and the overarching story, because if there isn't, then you're going to be uh, uh, breaking the the uh, 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 flow state, because it's not going to make sense. I mean, why all of a sudden is this happening here, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the story? You're gonna, it's gonna run. You're gonna run into problems there. So I think. So what I try to do is I try to have everything. All the events, all the encounters make sense to the story, make sense to what's going on in this adventure. Yeah, so so that's it. That's that's all this video is about. It's just a way, it's a different, I think it's a different way. I've never seen anybody really do this before. So so I realize that well, how I set out my dungeons maybe is a little bit different than, than uh, a lot of other people set out their dungeons. And instead of using, because a dungeon itself is basically a flowchart, and instead of a flowchart, I just lay out the events, try and have them more, each one more exciting, try and keep it within the flow state, and then I can just add them as I need as the night unfolds, as the players explore the dungeon, the different events for the story can emerge. Anyway, I hope that makes some sense. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you next time. Take care.